We've had the awesome privilege of getting to work on over 250 projects for our clients over the past year and a half that we've been in business. And one of the things that we've learned along the way is really interesting. We started by doing almost all time and material or hourly work. We'd have clients come to us and say, here are the processes that we want to automate. We'd understand more about it, and then we'd automate those for our clients. But when you work on so many projects across so many industries, you start to see certain themes and variations of the same business processes that need to be automated. And so what we've done is we've really learned a lot from that, and we've realized there's really only so many different ways that you can configure some of these processes. So I'll give you an example. If you're invoicing through QuickBooks, which millions of businesses do, there are certain settings that you have to do. This is just simply how you invoice in QuickBooks. Now, of course, there's different configuration settings, but what we've realized is we can write the core base of code for this and then make certain subtle changes that our clients need as opposed to kind of redrawing this from scratch each time. And by doing that, we're able to give a lot of value to our clients because now they're able to implement much, much quicker and at a reduced rate, essentially, because we're not doing this custom every single time. In this video, I want to peel back the curtain a little bit so you can start to visualize some of these automated business processes, because instead of having to think from scratch of like, well, I know I need to automate my business, but I'm not sure where to start. Instead, you can see how we're automating other businesses. Use this kind of as a demo to be able to get an idea of what business processes might make sense for you to automate. And so what we find is by putting this automation system around your business, it takes the mental load, that toll off of you as a business owner so you can focus on the real things that matter. All right, let's go ahead and dive in. Now, the application that I'm using here is called SmartSuite. It's one of our favorite work management tools. We'll probably be rolling out this functionality for Airtable and ClickUp as well. So first we'll start in the CRM solution and we want to be able to create account and contact records. And one of the ways to do this is by having a form submissions table. And this could have information coming from fill out forms or wherever we want that to come from. So here I'm going to just create a new record. Again, this could be inbound. We could be manually creating it ourselves. But the important part here is we want to have a process by which we can check for duplicate accounts and contacts because there's so many systems that we've worked with where people have this mess of a database and we want to preventatively make sure that it's cleaned up in the first place by not allowing all these duplicates to get through. So I'm going to put in some key information. So now that I've put in some of this information, let's go ahead and save that record. And we'll see that this new form submission has been created. And if we scroll over here, as we're talking, this is going to go through this automation to detect, is there already an account that matches that? Here we go. You can see that updated. So because there wasn't a new corp account record, it created a new one, and now it added a new contact as well. So we've got that information. We can go over into our accounts. We can see that new corp is there as a prospect that we're currently working with. We've got different sales statuses here. And presumably after we've met with them, and now we want to go to the next stage, we're ready, they're ready to close. We wanna be able to send out a sales agreement. So to do that, we're gonna click this button to create a Panda doc. And that's gonna take that information and it's gonna send it on to our executive at our own company to be able to sign. And then once they've signed, it's going to send it on to the client to sign and then we'll have a done deal. So let's go ahead and click that button. This can be customized, this success message that happens here. But if we come back, what's happening is it's processing the logic. Oh, there we go, you can see it's got agreement created. So it's told us we've taken the information from SmartSuite. We've sent it to PandaDoc. And you can see it updates again to say agreement sent. Because in PandaDoc, that's a two-step process, creating the agreement and then actually sending it out automatically. We're going to take a look at that. And you see it also grays out this button. So no longer can we create that agreement because it already exists. But if we want to, we could certainly view that agreement. So if we want to have one consolidated spot, and not have to hunt through all the agreements because there's not great organization in PandaDoc. Now we can see that. And we can see it's pre-filled that information with everything that we've already collected from that customer. So it could be from their account record or contact record. And we've pre-populated that information in the agreement to be signed. So here I've gotten an email notification. I'm the executive at the company that's actually doing the sales here. We can open this up and we've got our notification to sign this document. And I'm the first signer, so I'll go ahead and do that. We'll start, we'll go through here. 
looks good to me. I'm going to accept and sign, and then we'll finish our agreement. And now at this point, it's sent our agreement onto the client to be able to sign, and they need to put in a little bit more information. So let's go through that process next. And now I'm the client. I now receive my email with the Panda doc. We can open it up now as the second signer. And here's where we want to be able to capture additional information from the client. So this is where we need the official address information of their headquarters because we're going to take all that address information and we're going to put that into QuickBooks for our actual customer record. So we've got all these additional fields. I'm just putting in a fake phone number and address. We'll press next. This looks good to us. So now we're signing as the client. We'll accept and sign that and complete it. And now if we head back into SmartSuite, we can see the account kind of shifted on us here. It's no longer here under prospects because here, if we scroll down, we can see we've now updated that because they signed it. They're now a customer. New Corp is now a customer. And you can see it automatically updated to say the agreement is signed. We see a lot of automation consultants who send out agreements, but they kind of forget to do the round trip back which is to say we've collected all the signatures. This is good to go. Let's now update, turn them into a customer. We've got all the information we need. And the other thing, if we keep scrolling over here, is that it created a QuickBooks customer. So instead of just signing the agreement and saying, okay, we've got a customer inside a smart suite, it actually took that information, pushed it into QuickBooks so that they're going to be ready to invoice when we've got that information for it. So it's given us back this customer ID, which means we can click on this button to view inside of QuickBooks. This is gonna open up our sandbox here, and we can see here is that new company, new corp that was created, Dan Lehman. Here's the billing address for it, and any of those fields that we wanna push into QuickBooks so that we're ready to invoice. So that covers kind of this first part that we're digging into in the CRM. We're also doing things with activity tracking, like automatically syncing and logging email activities. But let's hop out of here and into the project management side where we're gonna deal with our next processes. So now we've had this customer sign and we could have it automatically create a new project for them as soon as they become a customer. But maybe we have different project types and we wanna do it ourselves. So let's create our own project here and I'll just call this new corp project. The other fields don't really matter here too much, but the important part is that we want to set a project type because we've built out project templating. So now if you have different milestones and tasks and custom fields, rather than having to duplicate this, which isn't going to manage the dependencies very well. If you have dependencies like you'd see on a Gantt chart, you want to make sure that you have an actual templating engine behind this. And so to do this, we've built this out. So we said, here's a standard project. Now let's go ahead and generate the tasks. And so if we head into our phases, you can think of phases as maybe different milestones or features. Here you can see this actually created the different phases, populating the different dates for it. So we can have these different basically ways of grouping tasks together. Some people might call it features or phases or milestones. And then within that, we've got our different tasks that people work on. Let me just collapse these. And we could, of course, filter these differently if we want to. But here's the tasks that we have for this new corp project. Now, we know that not all tasks will be templated. We could add our own tasks into each of those phases as we want. But this helps ease that process of building out the initial projects. So one of the things that we're able to do, like I said, we've got predecessors and successors, and we could view these on something like a Gantt chart if we want to, to view all of our different dependencies. But just as we're looking here, the really key pieces that we're focused on are going to be around the billing aspects of this because we want to be able to send those invoices to our customers. So here, let's say we've logged some time against these tasks already. Now, one of the things that we can do is have different billing rates on this. So you can see here, that we've got two different resources doing these different tasks. Each of them have their own different bill rate. And so by choosing a different resource, maybe we bill an architect at one rate and we bill a junior resource at another rate. We can certainly do that. Now, why I bring up different rates is because some clients of ours have really specific billing needs around different resource rates. Others have a contracted rate or maybe it's even flat fee. So it could be flat fee and say it's $5,000 for this given phase. Someone else might say, well, we're going to bill with this standard bill rate across all the projects. So this needs to handle the complexity of different bill rates. And I'm going to show you the most complex one here just to show you that it's possible with these different resource rates that we're able to take that into consideration. So now when it comes to actually invoicing these clients, the important part here is that we need to make sure that our tasks that we want to bill for are marked as complete because this is going to signal to the system it's okay to bill these tasks. They're not in progress. We don't want them 
shifted to another week. So when we're ready to invoice these, I'm going to do them at the phase level. Then we're going to go ahead and generate that invoice. It's going to look at all of the tasks that we have that are currently complete. So let me go ahead and click this. And now if we click over on our invoices, we can see this has created a new invoice with today's date and with the client that we're invoicing. And so if I actually expand this record, let me show you some of the fields with this. The most important part here is that this is supporting different invoice lines. Now, how are we doing this with invoice lines? Well, let me show you. Because we had two different bill rates, we had $150 and $200 an hour, it now aggregated those tasks. So we could have 25 different tasks and it might only have one line item. It really just comes down to if we're putting a different service or product on those line items. So this gives us the opportunity to be able to review everything about that invoice before we actually send it out to the customer. Now, if this invoice looks good to us, we have the option to automatically bill this from directly inside a smart suite. We don't have to be going back and forth all the time between QuickBooks and between our work management system. And we find this saves tons of hours and week. We know this ourselves because we're billing typically 40 clients in a given week. And in order to do that, we don't have the time to be able to go back and forth and manually copy and paste all this information from all these task records, we really have to do this in bulk. So to give you an example here, we're going to change this status. It's been created here in SmartSuite, but let's go ahead and generate this in QuickBooks. Now we're waiting a second here. This should be able to show once we've actually created that invoice inside of QuickBooks, this status is going to change. Instead of generating QuickBooks, it's going to there we go. We, we've got sent instead. And so you can see it goes to sent and we've got that QuickBooks invoice ID here, which means, of course, that we'd be able to open this up if we want to review it just so that we feel more comfortable about it. So here you go inside of QuickBooks. Now we've got all that information that's come over, including payment terms. We've got the invoice date when it's due. And then we've got those different line items, including even putting descriptions in so that our client knows exactly what it is that we're billing them for. So that looks good. Now we've decided for those clients that we want to automatically invoice them. And so this was actually sent out. They get an email with the link for their invoice. They can make the payment online. We have other clients who are like, okay, I'm glad it's automated, but I don't want to actually send it out from SmartSuite. And that's okay too. We essentially have a parameter that says, do you want to auto invoice them and automatically send it out? If yes, then we're going to do that. If not, we can just generate it in QuickBooks and you can send it out yourself. Now, the last thing we'll want to do is actually simulate a payment here. So let's go ahead and click on receive payment. This wouldn't be what it would look like to the customer. They'll get that nice little screen where they can pay online if you've enabled them to be able to do that. So we went ahead and paid that invoice. That's all set. If we go back into SmartSuite, this now updates that status automatically that it's paid. And so this gives us a nice, easy way if we want to see, hey, what are all the invoices that I have that have been paid that haven't been paid by this date? This will automatically keep those in check in the system. So I hope this has been helpful to see how you can really automate business processes end to end. In this case, we went from doing form submissions and creating accounts and contact records we're sending out agreements. Once they're signed, we're creating the customer record inside of our invoicing platform. From there, we have automated project templating and creating project tasks and phases. We can log our time against it. We can send out invoices. We can take all our payments and log them back into the system. This is all something that we've done together in the course of this small video that we have. Whereas in reality, what we see with so many of our clients is that these processes take hours and hours a week. And so what we find is implementing something like this can take so much that mental load off of you as a business owner as you've implemented this automation in your business. Now, if you have any questions about setting up an automated system for your business, don't hesitate to reach out to our website at automationhelpers.com where we're offering free 30-minute consultations.